So, let us continue with our discussion on connectedness. So, the main result we are going to prove today is the following theorem. So, let x and y be connected topological spaces. Then the product x cross y with the product topology is connected. So, let us prove this. So, let us assume that x cross y is not connected. So, then there are open subsets non empty open subsets A and B such that this product is the disjoint union of A and B. So, in the previous lecture, so in the previous lecture, we saw that uh, the image of a connected space topological space. under a continuous map is again connected. Okay. So, the precise result was f is from x to y, x is connected, then f of x with the subspace topology from y from y is connected. So, let us use this result. Uh, so, we look at the map from y to, so fix x naught in x. Right? So, fix an x naught in x right? and consider the map from y to x cross y given by y maps to x naught comma y. So, to check that this map is continuous, we just need to check that both the factors, the projections to both factors are continuous. The projection to the first factor is just the constant map which sends everything to x naught and therefore, it is continuous. The projection to the second factor is the identity map which is continuous. Right? So, this map is continuous. Continuous and has image equal to the subset x naught cross y. Right? So, therefore, applying this previous result, so thus x naught cross y with the subspace topology, since y is connected, is connected. So, now let us look at we intersect this equation with x naught cross y. So, we get x naught cross y is intersected with A. This is an open subset of x naught cross y in the subspace topology disjoint union intersected with B. Right? So, uh, so if x naught cross y intersected A is non empty and x naught cross y intersected B is non empty, then we get a contradiction, a 
contradiction to the connectedness of x naught cross y. So, therefore, one of these has to be empty. So, this implies that x naught cross y is contained in A or in B. It is completely contained either in A or it is completely contained in B, right. So, right. Uh, so, similarly, so this happens for all x naught in x, right. So, given any x naught in x, when we look at x naught cross y, that subset is completely contained either in A or in B, right. And so, similarly, similarly, arguing in the same way for every y naught in y, the subset x cross y naught is contained in A or in B, right. Uh, so, now we can get a contradiction as follows. So, choose any. So, since A is non empty, let x naught comma y naught be a point in A, right. So, So, suppose our point x naught comma y naught is here, right. So, then uh, if we fix x naught, so this is the line, this is x naught, right. This is x naught cross y, right. So, this implies that. So, since x naught comma y naught is, comp is contained so, as x naught cross y is contained in A or in B and it has a point and x naught comma y naught which is in a point in this x naught cross y is in A. This implies that this entire line x naught cross y is completely contained inside A, right. Now, we can take any point, let us say y 1 over here and we can argue in the same way. We can look at the line, this line, right. So, this is y 1 and this line is x cross y 1. So, this implies okay, for any y in y, x naught comma y is contained in A uh, and since x cross y is completely contained. in A or in B and it has this one point x naught comma y. Okay, so, actually y 1, let me just take this point y. Right, this is this point y. So, this point is contained in A and this entire line is con contained con either in A or B. But this line contains this point which is in A, so which forces that this implies that x cross y is contained in A, right. And this happens for every y, for every y in y, right. So, this implies that x cross y, which is equal to the union of x cross small y, is completely contained inside A, yeah. But this contradicts. But this shows that B is empty, 
which is a contradiction. Right. So, thus uh, x cross y is connected. So, as a corollary, we see that R n is connected. Okay. Right. So, inside R n, so okay. Um, So, let us see some applications of the results that we have seen so far, right. So, we just showed that this, we just showed this corollary R n is connected and as an application, right. So, there is no surjective continuous map f from the interval 0 1 to let us say the interval 0 1 disjoint union. 3,4. Right? Why is this? Because if there was such a surjective continuous map, then it will force that the image is connected. But clearly, uh, since the map is such, so if such a map existed, then since it is surjective, uh, this will imply that 0, 1 disjoint union 3 4 is connected, but clearly that is not possible, this is not possible, right. Because if we let x equal to this disjoint union and we let this to be u and this to be v, right. So, then both u and v are open in x, right. So, x obviously has obviously has I mean we are giving we are giving x the subspace topology from R, right, has the subspace topology from R. Right. So, in particular these two spaces cannot be homeomorphic. Okay. Uh, another simple observation is that if x and y are homeomorphic topological spaces, then x is connected if and only if y is connected, right. So, this is easy because if f and y are homeomorphic, that means there is a continuous bijective continuous map from x to y, right. So, therefore, the image of f is all of y and since x is connected, so that means y is connected, right. And conversely, if you are given that y is connected, then we can take the inverse of f, right, g. And yeah, once again, since the image of g is all of x, it will mean that x is connected, okay. Uh, now, the next application we have in mind is to show that the spheres are connected, but for that we need the following lemma. Right. Let T 1 and T 2 be connected subspaces.
of a topological space X. Right. So uh, assume that T one intersection T two is non empty. Right. Then the union T one union T two is non empty. So, yeah. So let's prove this. Uh, so let us assume, if possible. So if possible, let T one union T two be uh, not be connected. Okay, be disconnected. Okay. So, let us say our T 1 is like this and T 2 is like this. Right. So, that means, where we can write T 1 union T 2 uh, is equal to T 1 union T 2. So, let us call this space Y. So, since we are assuming that Y is disconnected, so we can write we can write Y is equal to there are two open subsets. So, every open subset looks like Y intersection U where u is an open subset of x disjoint union y intersection u v right where u and v are open subsets of x okay so let's take a point in the intersection so let a be a point in the intersection which exists because uh, we are assuming that the intersection is not empty, right? So then, A is either in Y intersection U or in Y intersection V. Right? So assume that A is in Y intersection U. Right? Okay. So since now let's look at T one, right? So interse intersecting this equality with T 1, we get that T 1 intersected U disjoint union T 1 intersected U. Right? Now, T 1 is connected as T 1 is connected, one of these has to be empty. That is, T 1 is completely contained in U or T 1 is completely contained in V. Right? So, since T 1 contains A and A is in U, right, as A is in T 1 and A is in U, so this implies that T 1 is completely contained inside U. Right? Similarly, as A is also in T 2, this implies that and T 2 is also connected. So, repeating the same argument with T 2, this implies that T 2 is also contained. right? But then this implies that Y which is equal to T 1 union T 2 is also contained in U. Right? So, this implies that uh, this Y intersection V has to be empty. Right, because y intersection u is equal to y, so therefore this has to be this is forced to be empty. Right, uh, this is a contradiction. Right, so now let us use this lemma to show that the spheres are connected. So corollary of the lemma, S n is. So, to show this, recall that. So, recall the map projection from a point right. and using this map, we had shown that using this map, 
we had proved. Uh, this was left as an exercise actually. Using this map, we can show that. We can show that. So, this map is phi from S n minus. So, let us make a picture. So, we are taking the sphere, we remove this north pole one point and then we project to this plane. Right. So, we have shown that this minus uh, 2 r n is a bijective continuous map whose inverse is also continuous. Okay. So, uh, since so let psi denote the inverse right uh, right so as r n is connected so let's call this inverse uh, let's call this psi 1 okay as r n is connected this implies psi 1 of r n which is equal to the sphere minus this north pole is connected. Okay. Now, similar to projecting removing the north pole we can instead of the north pole we can remove the south pole and project once again. Right. So, so, let us call this map phi 1. Yeah. Similar to this map, to phi 1, we have a map phi minus 1, this from the sphere. So, we remove the point, the south pole to R n. Right. So, geometrically, what does this map do? So, we have the sphere, we are removing this point given any point on the sphere. So, this point is p and this point is x. We join p and x with a straight line and x is sent to the point sent to the point q. Right. So, this is our r n. This is s n minus minus 1. Right. So, in the same way, we proved that phi 1 is continuous, is bijective continuous, is bijective continuous with continuous inverse. we can prove that phi minus 1 is bijective continuous with continuous inverse. Okay. So, let psi minus 1 denote the inverse of phi minus 1. Right. So, then psi minus 1 of R n is connected as R n is connected. Right. So, our S n we can now write it as phi 1 oh sorry psi 1 of R n
union psi minus 1 of r n right. So, psi 1 of r n is S n minus this north pole and psi minus 1 of r n is S n minus this south pole right. So, as both these intersect, so let us call this T 1 or we will write as S n minus the north pole and S n minus the south pole have non empty intersection. and these are connected the previous lemma implies that S n is connected yeah. of course, always n is greater than equal to 1 over here. Okay. So, uh, that is a nice application. So, we will end this lecture here okay, and in the next lecture we will continue with connectedness. Mm -hmm.